Hello, I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy and welcome to another edition of Seafood Source TV, the bi-weekly video blog where we bring you news, information and insights into the world of the seafood industry. Topping our news roundup this week, environmental activist group Oceana issued a statement responding to critics of its report on bycatch released back in March. The report, Wasted Catch, Unsolved Problems in U.S. Fisheries, took aim at nine American fisheries in particular that the report called the most egregious offenders. At the time, Oceana publicized its report as describing the nine dirtiest fisheries in the country. The report prompted backlash from the Council Coordination Committee, which represents the eight United States Regional Fishery Management Councils. The committee accused Oceana of using insufficient data in its report. In its statement, Oceana acknowledged that the government data it used needs to improve, but defended its position that not enough is being done to prevent bycatch in American fisheries. Well, after a two-year absence, the SeaWeb Seafood Summit is on track for next year. The popular conference is scheduled for February 9th to 11th of 2015 at the Hyatt Regency in New Orleans, Louisiana. Topics are expected to include sustainability, aquaculture, financing, certification, and other key issues affecting the seafood industry. The NGO SeaWeb is reviving the show in partnership with Diversify Communications, which is the parent company of Seafood Source. Registration hasn't opened yet, but to keep tabs on the latest, visit www.seafoodsource.seafoodsummit.org. In Europe, the mackerel wars may be over, but the small pelagics are still in the spotlight. Last week, the Mackerel Industry Northern Sustainability Alliance, a collective group of more than 700 mackerel fishing boats, has begun an assessment process with the Marine Stewardship Council. The MSC suspended the certificates for North Atlantic mackerel fisheries in April 2012, while the countries of Iceland and the Faroe Islands locked horns with the EU and Norway over mackerel quotas. Now that the dispute has been resolved, the Alliance is seeking to restore the MSC certification. Also in Europe this week, the Moroccan government has approved a new fisheries protocol at the European Union, which grants EU vessels expanded fishing rights in Moroccan waters for the first time in more than two years. The last agreement expired in December 2011. In return for the EU fishing vessel rights, Morocco will receive financial assistance from the EU to develop its own domestic fishery sector. Sardine prices in Japan are skyrocketing. Seafood Source's Chris Lowe reported last week that prices for sardines at Tokyo's Skiji World Wholesale Market in June went up anywhere from 30 to 50%. It's a bit unusual. Prices usually drop this time of year as landings rise, but this year supplies in June were down as much as 60% compared to the same time last year. It's possible temporary variations this year in water temperature are to blame. Results of new tests by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for radiation in Alaska seafood has shown that seafood in the North Pacific and Alaska waters is safe to eat. The FDA has been monitoring seafood in the United States following the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster in Japan in 2011 and has noted no signs of contamination. However, Alaskans insisted on their own series of tests for Alaska-specific products. The FDA conducted the study in cooperation with Alaska's Departments of Environmental Conservation and Health and Social Services. The world may be running out of Pacific bluefin tuna. That's according to a new report from the Pew Charitable Trust's Global Tuna Conservation Group. The report provides a blueprint for recovery of Pacific bluefin stocks, which includes huge cuts in quotas throughout the Pacific Ocean, better monitoring of fish aggregation devices, and increased observer coverage on longline vessels. And fallout continues from the announcement last month by the U.S. State Department that it was downgrading Thailand to Tier 3, the lowest possible grade, on its annual trafficking in persons report. According to our Spanish correspondent Pilar Caride, a Spanish association representing canned seafood processors there welcomed the decision, calling it a step in the right direction for human rights. Meanwhile, the online publication The Nation is reporting that Thailand's deputy national police chief, who is in charge of suppressing human trafficking, issued a statement re recently where he vowed to crack down on what he called slave labor. Finally, a quick note about our sister publication, Seafood Business Magazine. As we announced recently, the magazine is being taken digital. All the great content you remember reading in the magazine will now be a part of Seafood Source's offerings. That includes feature stories and other in-depth examinations of current seafood industry topics from James Wright, the magazine's senior editor, as well as market reports, articles, and commentary from a worldwide network of correspondents. You can see Jamie's latest in-depth interview with Maine restaurateur Harding Lee Smith on SeafoodSource.com right now. That's all for now, but we'll be back in two weeks with another edition of Seafood Source TV where we bring you more news, information, and insights into the world of the seafood industry. Until then, I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy saying thanks for watching and we'll see you online.